Hey guys, it's Mr. Caproni, and I wanted to talk to you a bit about statistics. Since, let's be honest, just reading through the slides and clicking isn't always the most fun. So, starting off, you should be super excited about this year. I know math teachers across the years, ever since you've been little, little tells you all these things about, hey, this is going to be super useful and super awesome and OMG. Let's be honest, you're probably not going to be factoring anything anytime soon after you leave high school. but Statistics is one of the first classes that you really should feel like you might be able to use some of this stuff in life. There are tons of statistics out in the world, anywhere from polling on who we're voting for our president to knowing what percent of the population watches YouTube versus TikTok. Any of those stats fall into what we'll be talking about this year. So if you guys noticed, your definition earlier of statistics was collecting organizing, analyzing, and interpreting data. Now that means any bit of information that you can collect. We're gonna talk about how you can organize it for people to better see, but we're also gonna talk about how you can use that data to make informed decisions in the future. Now, when we are looking through this, we have two major types of statistics that we're gonna cover. The first type is gonna be descriptive statistics. and That's where we're gonna spend most of the first half of the year. Um, that just talks about how we're organizing things, summarizing things. It talks about like when you're looking at data, what kind of information can you pull from it and how can we represent it graphically so other people can see it uh, but later in the year we will move on to inferential statistics which has to do with all right now that we have all the data we know how to visually represent it how can we use that data to make guesses about the future so we won't get to inferential statistics until way down the line but for descriptive statistics that's where we'll be starting and that's going to be just Let's collect the data, learn how to do that, and let's organize it in a way that's best for others to understand. Now, data. Data is where we're actually going to be spending the meat of this lesson. Now, when I'm talking about data, I'm talking about any information you can collect from the world around you. This could be how old people are, or it could be what their favorite number is, or it could be a simple yes or no to a question that you ask. Anything can be considered data as long as you are able to collect it and record it. Data is usually collected from two major sources, all right? So starting off, we either get data from a whole population or we get data from a sample. Now, what's the difference between the two? A population is when we're talking about everyone involved, like a whole group in a situation, all right? This can be giant. This can be like all people in the U.S. or it could be all high school students or it could just be all seniors at West High or all students at West High, where a sample is meant to be pulled from a larger population. So when you're dealing with a sample, you don't really know it's a sample unless you know it's coming from a much larger population. So when I'm looking at sample, I'm looking at specific pieces of a whole population. So instead of all high schoolers in America, maybe I'm looking at like 500 high schoolers that I chose. So that would be a sample, all right? So this is the major difference between population and sample. We are looking at like the whole country versus just some people from the whole country, all right? So when you're separating the two of those, it's important to know what type of data you're dealing with. Now, there are data for each. For example, I could tell you like I asked 500 people and 200 of them said yes. The 200 is giving me information about that sample. Now, later in this course, we'll talk about how we can use that 200 to make guesses about the whole population, but that information itself is not from the population. On the other hand, there are always polls across America, and say, for example, with voting, we look at it and say, oh, well, after everyone's voted or whatnot, we found out that 52% of people in America voted for this person. All right. That would be data from the entire population. So in that case, we're looking at the whole big picture groups. So we can actually call that population. Now, when we do separate these two sample and population, what we're looking at, the numbers we're pulling from them, we give specific names. If the number we pull out comes from the sample, we call it a statistic. Whereas if the number we pull out comes from the population, then we call that a parameter. Now, don't get confused because I know a lot of time we don't have to dive fully into the vocab for this, but when you see the words statistic and parameter, that's what it's talking about. It's telling you, hey, this is a number they collected from the whole population, or they're telling you this is a number they collected from a sample. 
Your next few slides are going to ask you about some of the terms we just went through. Don't get stressed out. Try your best to answer all of them. But I'm going to go through this example right now with you that's going to be very similar to the ones you're going to do. It says, in a recent survey, 834 employees in the United States were asked if they thought their jobs were highly stressful. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like the whole idea of stress right now in the world right now is completely crazy. And I bet you a lot of people would have changed their answers to this survey in the current situation. But you know what, that's, that's neither here nor there, we're focusing. Of the 834 respondents, 517 said yes, identify the population and the sample. Then tell if the numbers given were parameters or statistics. This seems like it asked you a whole bunch, but don't freak out, all of it's kind of tied together. First off, what's our population? Most of the time in any of these questions, they won't tell you the population flat out. You just gotta look at what the sample was and say, okay, big picture, where did that come from? Because remember, population is all the people that you grab the sample from. So in this case, it's pretty clear on what our sample was. Our sample was the 804, 834 employees that they grabbed, or the 834 respondents, however you want to word that. So then what would your population be? Well, where did they pull those employees from? They pulled them from employees in the United States. So when we're talking population, we are looking at all employees in the United States. And this is a common way of doing this. You kind of just see where the sample came from and then replace the number with the word all. So for the population here, I would say all employees in the United States, whereas our sample is just the 834 that we pulled from it. Now, what about parameter or statistics? Now remember the data we pull is what we refer to as the parameter or statistic. In this case, we're talking about the fact that we have 517 people that said yes, all right? That number is either gonna be a parameter or a statistic. That's the information we're pulling from all of our respondents is that 517 said yes. Now remember, where did that 517 come from? Did it come from all the people in our population, or did it just come from the 834 in our sample? In this case, it just came from the 834 in our sample. We have no idea what they grabbed from the whole population. That means that because we are dealing with sample, S goes with S, and this would be a statistic. Now, don't stress out about these. A lot of times, these are pretty easy to go through. If you get stressed out about parameter or statistic, just ask yourself, did the number at the end come from the whole population or from our sample? If it says something like 52% of all people voted for this, then you probably are looking at a population. But a lot of times it's going to be a statistic because it's coming from just the people they ask from the larger population. Well, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. It was great seeing you guys. And remember, go ahead and try the next few slides on your own. And at the end of the Pear Deck, I'm going to explain to you guys what you're going to be doing the next few days for your homework. Have a great day, guys. It was wonderful seeing you.